what is up guys it's troy at the full setup back with another news and rumory type videos so we've got a few things to cover today the first thing is we're going to be talking about the ryzen 9 5900x 12 core cpu um we've also had some gpu links as well this is this is an all amd video really big navi 6700 xt 6800 xt and 6900 xt specs have leaked and the biggest news that we're going to be talking about is that the ryzen 7 5800x 8 core cpu early benchmark is showing that it's giving the 10900k a good pasting so that's the uh, 10 core processor i think i got the right one there but as always these are just news rumors speculation take it all with a pinch of salt but we are getting very close to the announcements now i think the is the amd one the 8th of october um for the cpus and then we've got the gpus a little bit later in the month as well so as it gets to closer it becomes a little bit less rumory and generally quite often you know right but like i said take it with a pinch of salt and also as always everything that i say as well you know my thoughts my feelings on things it is just my opinion we're all welcome to them and i want to know your opinion so make sure you hit me up in the comments section right then let's start off with the ryzen 9 5900x i think this is the one that's just got the least amount of sort of anything behind it it's not I don't really know who the leaks from but this what this news story has been around everywhere the last sort of day amd ryzen 9 5900x 12 core 24 thread cpu on zen 3 are up to 5 gigahertz with 150 watt tdp so an up in the tdp that i think the 3900x was at 105 watt tdp but you could unlock it a bit to sort of push it a little bit more 24 threads up to 5 gigahertz we've been hearing that for so long now haven't we i think the rumors since ryzen is coming out especially the whole rumors and youtube rumors is everyone's been going on about 5 gigahertz and it would be nice to see but for me i'm more worried about the ipc improvements i want to see a frequency bump because ryzen hasn't gone up that much since the first gen i know stuff like the 1700 and the 1600 were lower down on the cores the all core turbos would sit around sort of 3.2 3.4 gigahertz but the XCPUs have been been pushing some good frequencies, but we we do want more, don't we? As gamers, we want more. I think there's something about getting to five gigs, isn't there? And Intel's been there for a while, but if you got the IPC improvements, you know that's what we're looking for. AMD's new Ryzen 9 5900X will be the flagship Vermeer desktop CPU in the new Zen 3 based Ryzen 5000 range of CPUs. The new Ryzen 9 5900X will reportedly pack 12 cores and 24 gigs at 5 gigahertz with an ipc improvement of 20 percent see now that's what i want to see now i'd be sh i'd be surprised if it does 5 gigs especially all core and everyone said you'll be able to do overclocking and all of that but um you know they're saying here like 4.7 gigs on the 3900 xt i'm pretty sure it went to about 4.3 4.4 all core turbo i might be wrong there but there wasn't a lot of it there wasn't that massive improvement there. I mean, the, the CPU I've been able to push the most anyway is the 3300X up to like almost 4.6 gigahertz, but I don't really have any GPUs that actually take advantage of doing the extra anyway, because we'll have to get some new GPUs. But this one looks good. TDP up to 150 watts. Um, so that's up from 105, like what I said earlier. You know, interesting to see that. It'll be interesting to see the increase. I think at the moment, because they are, they've been just giving Intel a spanking for a while now. And we know that Intel's drawing more power. Um, we know that they're really, you know, struggling on that 14 nanometer plus, 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 process. So, you know, if it means that they can get higher gains and higher core counts, clock counts, you know, push those gigahertz by using a bit more power, then why not? Because it always used to be that it used to be the other way around quite a lot, didn't it? But you know, since they've gone seven nanometers, AMD have, have done really good on the energy side of things. So there, you know, that's what it's at. But look, like we can see here, that 3900X. Oh no, I'm on the wrong one. Okay. Where's the 3900X? See, like the all core. Four gigs, do you know what I mean? You're going to have to do some over... I'll be surprised. I don't think it's going to be five gigahertz. Don't think it's going to be five gigahertz. Shall we save the 5000X X till last? Yeah, let's look at that one last. So next up this is the radeon rx 6700 xt 6800 xt and 6900 xt details leak okay so we've got some rumors here of uh what they're gonna pack i think the leaker who leaked this though he's quite known this isn't the one i, I sort of got all of this stuff when i was at work earlier so this isn't the same web page but the leaker is quite known and like i said we're getting very close now so let's have a little look so we've got the 6700 xt which is coming around the same stream processors as the 5700 xt well the exact same stream processors 
but we're hoping to see architectural improvements. I think they were promising up to almost 50%. GDDR6 is being used, that's sort of expected. 1500 megahertz base, but they're all saying 1500 here. So I think that's just because we're not, we don't know what the clocks are till near the end, but I'm expecting to see them higher, especially with what the PlayStation 5's GPU is running at. Probably the downside on the 6700 XT, but again, we don't know the price would be the six gigabytes of RAM, okay? 192 bit, 150 watts TDP. For a 1080p card, fine. 1440p as well, you can kind of get away with six. But if the rumored NVIDIA 3060 Ti is packing eight gigs, you know, and we're thinking that's probably going to be somewhere around a 2080, 2080 Super, so just pushing past the 1080 Ti. Uh, the pricing is going to have to be right on this card. It's going to have to be right on this card. You could say to go with eight gigabytes, but I think it's because it's a shrunk down version, maybe a lesser binned 6800 XT because we've got the same memory bit bus here, the 192 bit, which is meaning that we're going to have to go six gig or 12 gig of VRAM. But that's what this one's got. 3,840 stream processors, 12 gig of VRAM that we just mentioned, 200 watt TDP. That's an interesting one as well on the 6700 XT, 150 watt TDP. Now with Nvidia's TDP going up a bit on this generation, you know, we're drawing more power. You would think AMD would do what normally AMD does on the GPU and, you know, push them watts a bit more. Maybe they were trying to go power conservative. Maybe they should be pushing that power more. I've just always associated with AMD cards being power hungry and hot and heavy. I'm not the biggest AMD graphics card fan, but you know, if the benchmarks are where they're at, then definitely, definitely go for it. And then we've got the biggest one, the 6900 XT, big Navi, 16 gigabytes of VRAM, 256 bit memory bus, 300 watts TDP. So that's where they're going to be pushing that thing. And again, I've not got anything on the base clocks here, but I'm expecting it. I think it's the 6000 XT, which we're expecting to have nice, good clocks on it. Now, it all depends, you know, where they punch around, really. Um, and it's it's going to be a hard one because we do know that NVIDIA, they're going to have to bring out cards with more VRAM on them. I feel like they're just going to have to, unless these perform really bad. You know, there's been all the leaks, the gigabyte stuff that we covered. So I feel like that's going to have to be there. So, you know, we don't know. Is this punching with the 3090? Or is this punching with the 3080? We're not going to know until we've seen the benchmarks. And, you know, AMD are obviously going to show their initial benchmarks with AMD games, just like NVIDIA do. Like, we can't really blame any of them. Um, but very interested to see how ray tracing works. Um, ray tracing is something I'm really interested to see on these cards. I think it would be a very good move for AMD if they make it so the ray tracing is the same performance hit, like, all the way down. You know, like, well, where we had, like, you know, the 2060, which there was just no real point in turning it on. Do you know what I mean? I'd like to see it that it's just a 10 FPS hit. Oh, no, we know it's not going to be that much, but let's just say it's a 20 FPS hit all the way down the stack. Put the same exact tech when it comes to ray tracing in there. I don't know too much in it. I'm not scientific. I don't have the knowledge. I'm sure some of you big geeks are going crazy and, like, don't work like that. It's like Troy. It's bouncing around and shit. But I just, yeah, I'm interested. I'm actually interested to see how they get on at ray tracing and i do my worry always with nvidia cards not nvidia cards um uh, radeon amd cards at launch is just drivers that's why i don't review them as much because i used to just hate getting them at day one and the drivers were broken and you feel like it's a struggle anyway when the big reviewer out there is getting it two weeks before you and you think jesus what sort of shit were you working with because these drivers are crap and it's just put me off and I shouldn't do, and I should get some more out because I need to be impartial. Anyway, time for the big news. Time for the big news. The bit that you want to know about probably more than anything else. Leak. Obviously, it's a leak. You know what I mean? It could end up being a potato because right now it's just a leak. AMD Ryzen 7 5800X CPU. Zen 3 of Vermeer, probably getting that wrong, testing um, Ashes of the Singularity leaked. So we're just going to have a little look at the two test systems. Now this can be faked. We know that Ashes benchmarks can be faked. It could be photoshopped. We don't know, but it's very close to launch. So I'm expecting this one to be. So we've got a Ryzen 7 5800X 8 core processor, okay, with an RTX 2080. And um, we have an NVIDIA G again, RTX 2080 with an i9 10900K clocked at 3.7 gigahertz no clock on this one here so obviously that is the overclocking potential as well or if it's not seeing the overclock is that just the i imagine that's probably just seeing the base clock not actually seeing the boost we don't know what memory is being used either is there any let's just have a little flick no so we don't know about the ram you know someone could be gimping out the intel one as well but this is good what i'm seeing initially is good and something that i've been looking forward to because 
I've been looking at going back to Intel for a while, okay? I've been looking at going back to Intel for a while because I've got a 240 hertz monitor now. My next CPU and GPU choice has to be maxing out that monitor. And that's just somewhere where they've just been just a bit lacking. And with this, you know, 15 to even 25% IPC improvement, I can definitely see it's happening. And the results are showing it here. We are seeing the results here, guys. Have a little look at these little puppies here. And we have it against the 3800X as well, which is probably more in keeping with showing these IPC improvements. So for the crazy 4K batch um, normal, we've got 165, seven, 167 FPS for the 5000XT. That's a massive improvement up from the 125 FPS from the 3800X and 136 FPS on the 10900K. The medium is at 135 FPS. Again, still a 24 FPS gain over the 3800X. Like the 3800X is a good chip i9 1000k we got 119 fps and this is this if this is real this is good because remember this is at DirectX 12 as well so this is going to be flexing the cores eight cores 16 threads 20 threads we got going on here and on the heavy we get 110 fps 87 fps from the 3800x and 96 fps from the 10900k so it's looking good but we don't know do we we don't know and and just i think now as well we're getting so many calls on both sides amd just flexing cinebench out it's not enough anymore do you know what i mean it's not enough for me like they just have to pass that final hurdle for me like i'm not disrespecting anything they've done in the value perspective i've been using ryzen i love the i've got the 3600x sat over here it's to be fair it's more than enough for what i need like i'd love the 12 core but actually video editing on that with my little nvidia graphics card we just got the 1650 super in there at the moment but using that hardware encoding on adobe premiere pro it's shredding through this video it'll probably render this little video here in like two three minutes it's it's good i know there's not a lot going on in this video but my ones with a bigger b-roll it does a really good job and, and all of that is thanks to amd intel having to do all this is thanks to amd i mean at best we'd probably have a six core on the desktop market if amd didn't get their shit together that's the reality of it but you know i just want to be able to get those last frames like my gpu choice like it needs to have some horses like i, I need more lamborghini than i need you know bagatti that's the one bagatti but the cpu i need the cpu i know when i'm i know from running on low settings when i was pushing like my rtx 2060 just on low settings to try and get those frame rates right up like on some games fortnite apex um what i was overwatch you know easy to run games then it was fine. I could get up there on my 240 Hz monitor. It didn't look the best because you're on low. But on other games, it was struggling. Battlefield and Warzone, do you know what I mean? I could see the GPU usage. It was bottlenecking. The 3600 wasn't getting me there. Like the 3600 is a great chip. And I'd be very interested to see what the 5600 is like. Because I feel like a lot of people have said that eight cores are not the way to go at the moment. You either get the six core and be like really happy with it. Or you jump up to the 10 or 12 core the, the that eight core in the middle seems to be the elephant in the room because you, you're generally not getting a lot but then with the consoles using eight core processors eight core zen processors and with obviously always games being ported over as well i could see that maybe changing a bit but then the 3300x that quad core that i've got top performer man that's a great little card it's not going to do my 240 hz monitor but it's a great little cpu i said card there so yeah, a bit of a waffle there at the end, but um, yeah, I, I want them to do it. I want them to just topple Intel at that little top bit. You know, those games where you just want that. All you need is frames. It doesn't matter about quality settings. You play competitive graphics settings and you just want to be maxing out them 240 hertz or even the, is there 350, 360 hertz one that is out now? That you can max those out. And I, and I feel that's going to happen. And this, this might be it. This might be it, but it's one benchmark. But we haven't got long to wait. They're getting announced on the 8th. And imagine we're going to be able to get them by the end of the year. Hopefully, if all the scalpers don't buy the CPUs as well. Because if you do, I'm done. I'm just done with 2020. Anyway, let me know what you think. Um, are you looking forward to the 5900X? Um, do you think the 5800X could be an absolute beast? Judging by these ashes of the singularity benchmarks. And then also, what are you thinking about your next GPU purchase? Do you think you're going to maybe go Big Navi or you're going to go Team Green? Well, you know, it's all just time will tell now. It's a busy time. It's a good time to be a techie and be a gamer if you can get the kit from someone that's not trying to mark it up. But it might be worth to just wait for it all to come out and then make your decision January, February. That's what I'm going to do anyway. Anyway, that's it for me today. Make sure you subscribe. I'll be back with some more videos real soon.